Here we go. Here we are. Uh, let's start in a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et tenora mortis nostre. Amen. Then Joseph, protector of Holy Church, pray for us. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. All right. Well, here we are. Uh, we're talking about the future of the Mass of the Ages, and i um, so excited to let you guys in on all our secrets, <laughs> most of our secrets. Uh, what is the future of Mass of the Ages? What, what are we doing next? But the biggest question I know on a lot of your minds is, when is Episode 3 coming out? Um, for those of you who were here at the very beginning or who watched this later, we threw some new episode three clips into the intro, so I don't know if anyone noticed those new clips in the intro, but that's a little taste of episode three. We don't have a release date yet. Um, I wish we did, <laughs> but uh, I wish I knew it uh, when it was coming out um, because films like this take a lot of time and uh, an important film like this, uh, it's gotta be right. And we have an extensive checks and balances process. Um, and also episode three is bigger than episode two. I think it's the biggest and most important film we will make and uh, we're still in production on it. So comparing it to episode two, when we started editing episode two, we had all the footage we needed for it. We, we scheduled one production for England, but besides that we were just editing and it took nine months after episode two for, or after episode one for episode two to be released. So um, films, feature films, especially if you wanna make them excellent, they take a lot of time. Episode three is bigger, it's longer, and the story is still unfolding, but we're hard at work on it. So thanks for your patience, and I promise you that the wait is going to be worthwhile. Um, I'm, I'm so excited about episode three. I think it's gonna be our best of the trilogy. Uh, the other thing is for episode two, we had uh, one person on full-time staff and three part-time workers. Now, Mass of the Ages has four people full-time. So we went from one person full-time to now four, and we have three people part-time. So why is this? So we're hard at work on episode three, um, but we're also doing something more, doing something bigger. Um, Mass of the Ages is so much more than this trilogy. It's so much more than three films. The trilogy, the purpose of it was to introduce millions of Catholics to the Latin Mass, and it's doing that, it has been doing that. Episode three, I think, is gonna reach even more people. But Mass of the Ages, what we're about, um, the future of Mass of the Ages is we're going to increase Latin masses worldwide. That's gonna be, all our effort is gonna zero in on that goal. We're gonna increase Latin masses worldwide. Um, you know, we all know that Catholic parishes all over the world are hemorrhaging people. There's more funerals than baptisms. Uh, there's more gray hairs than anyone else. And there's a big problem with mass attendance worldwide. But at Latin mass parishes, it's the opposite. People drive one or two hours. Sometimes it's standing room only. Latin mass parishes are overflowing with people. So mass of the ages, yep. Yes, episode three and beyond episode three, our goal is going to be to increase Latin masses worldwide so that Catholic parishes all over, their, all over the world can flourish again. So how are we going to do this? So right now, if you just take a picture of the Latin masses worldwide in the sense of like, what's the, what's the state of affairs with the Latin mass worldwide? There's a few problems. Latin masses are under suspicion. People have a negative idea about what they are. Maybe they're just confused about what they are. Secondly, they're hard to find. Um, I didn't know a Latin mass existed in my hometown until I was 21, <laughs> 21 years, and I had a Latin mass parish 
uh, down the street from me. I didn't know it. Thirdly, Latin masses are rare. So this, this might be the most surprising thing for a lot of people. Uh, we think that, you know, the Latin mass movement is flourishing. And in one sense it is, when you look at an individual Latin mass parish, it's overflowing with people. But when you look worldwide, the reality is that less than 2% of practicing Catholics are attending a Latin mass. So let me say that again of practicing Catholics, those who attend mass every week, less than 2% of them are attending a Latin mass. So 98% of practicing Catholics aren't attending Latin mass. Yeah, a very small minority of them have tried out Latin mass and maybe been there once or they know about it. But the vast majority of these practicing Catholics don't really know what the Latin mass is. Or even worse, they probably have a negative perception of it. We hear this all the time. Yeah, we want people to come and experience it for themselves, but you know, people's impressions online, you know, when, when they're just scrolling through YouTube thumbnails of angry traditionalists or Pope Francis bashing, you know, articles, this or that, they think that the Latin Mass is just an anti-papal cult or something, um, or that it's filled with a bunch of people who just complain about the church or a bunch of angry people. The Latin mass doesn't make them happy. Why would I go to the Latin mass? The 98% who aren't attending Latin mass have a negative perception of the Latin mass. Um, and that's the first thing we're going to start to change. So episode three being, you know, the beginning of that, we're going to create a library of beautiful, winsome content that explains the Latin Mass. You know, you can watch an hour film and our trilogy is gonna stand the test of time. It's gonna be always available, but we're, we're also going to create short films. So like a film on Ad Orientum or Gregorian chant, like a type of film that you'd wanna send to your friends and family in the 98% to say, this is what I mean when I say like, I love, you know, sacred music. Um, high quality, excellent films, you know, a film that's not going to feel outdated in 10 years, you know, all the, all the effort and care that goes into our trilogy, but in a short film format and a, picture just a library of content. So for example, we have, we have, we have so many ideas for these short films. I'm sure you can think of all these ideas for short films that explain the Latin mass. Um, we're going to make three films to begin just about communion in the hand. And now it's, it's a difficult topic to broach, but these are the kinds of films we want, want to uh, make. So for example, the real story of communion in the hand, did Paul VI change, you know, communion in the hand, did the bishops change it? Is communion on the tongue an exception, that kind of thing. Another film idea is just the fittingness and beauty and attractiveness of the way traditional Catholics receive the Eucharist, kneeling on the tongue, how fitting that is for when you touch Almighty God. The third idea is there is a scientific study done of lost particles uh, uh, with communion on the hand. We're going to bring that to film. So you can just you can just imagine we have so many ideas for all this content. Um, in order to change the perception around the Latin Mass. You know, it's not going to be complaining and criticizing the Pope and reacting to problems. It's going to be a library of content that stands the test of time. It starts to change the perception people have about the Latin Mass. And one more thing I'll say on the branding and the perception of the Latin Mass, it's so important, is that companies will spend billions of dollars not in marketing in terms of like, hey, there's, you know, you can buy a 12 pack of Coca-Cola for two bucks or I don't know how much pop costs. I call it pop. I don't know how much it costs, but they're not spending that much money on marketing. They're spending it on branding. So what's the difference? Well, branding is the perception, the feeling people have about a product or a service. So what's your perception of Santa Claus? 
you picture, yes, you trads are picturing the real St. Nicholas, but what's your perception of Santa Claus? When I say Santa Claus, the first thing that comes to your mind is probably a jolly, uh, overweight, <laughs> happy Christmas man. Um, now, he wasn't jolly and happy and with rosy cheeks until Coca-Cola commissioned an artist to draw a Santa Claus for their campaign. And, you know, you have Santa drinking Coca-Cola and there's polar bears and Coca-Cola is refreshing, makes you think of Christmas. It gives you a gives people a, a positive feeling when they think about it. The reason you have the perception you do about Santa Claus is because of Coca-Cola spending money on branding. Um, so brand perception is really important, especially when it comes to Latin mass, because right now the battleground is in dioceses and with the hearts of bishops. You know, before Traditionis Custodis in Samorum Pontificum, Benedict XVI said any stable group of faithful can and should have the Latin Mass. If they request it, it should be given to them. Now, after Traditionis Custodis, the, the power is placed in the hands of the diocesan bishop. The battleground is in these dioceses. So it's important. It's so important that these bishops in these dioceses have a positive feeling, a positive idea about the Latin Mass. And I would say that the majority of these bishops are, you know, confused or, you know, have a neutral perception of the Latin Mass. Now, the interesting thing to note is, I don't know who put this site together, traditionuscustodis.info, but great job. Um, this is amazing info. They're compiling all the public responses bishops have submitted after Traditionis Custodis. So when TC came out, the Pope said, okay, bishops, you can uh, restrict the Latin Mass, you can designate Latin Mass parishes, you can ban the Latin Mass, mass like the power is in your hands. So what's been happening all over the world? Well, what's interesting is if you look at how many dioceses, how many bishops haven't suppressed any Latin masses. You know, okay, 26 Latin mass suppressions, you know, one is too many. But let's think of the potential. 176 dioceses. So if this rep is representative of the world, you know, like 70% plus of bishops haven't suppressed any Latin masses. But the perception of bishops, and I know this because we talk to them, is that they feel like they're alone. Because, you know, the Vatican and the news cycle, it's all saying that, yeah, the, the Latin mass communities is a big problem that needs to be de dealt with, that the bishops who are positive to the Latin mass are an exception. But we're seeing the opposite. Most bishops haven't suppressed any Latin masses. This means we need to, um, uh, create content and resources that that shape the branding around the Latin Mass. So bishops see that actually Latin Mass communities, the communities in my parishes, they're not trying to undermine Vatican II, or they're not, you know, uh, bashing me behind closed doors. They're not trying to start a parallel church. If bishops see that there's a ton of faithful, ordinary Catholics um, who certainly have questions about the reforms of Vatican II and maybe even Vatican II itself, but they're not here to create a parallel church. They're not, they're not complaining. They're not even talking about Vatican II that much. They just love the mass. If we can show that to bishops, it's going to, um, it's going to change their hearts and move their hearts to protect the Latin mass. Cause they're already largely positive towards it. Okay. So that's just one example of like why branding is really important. So, the second problem with Latin masses is that they're hard to find. Um, again, you can Google Latin mass finder. We have a Latin mass finder. There's a Latin mass directory that's really comprehensive. Unfortunately, even ours, I, I would admit, isn't that easy to use. Imagine there is an app <laughs> on your phone that uh, you could click a button and find a Latin mass near you, or you're traveling and you could scroll through 
any country in the world, any place in the world and find your closest Latin mass. Obviously, there's so many more things you can do with an app, but we can make Latin masses really easy to find. Uh, thirdly, um, Latin masses are rare. So here's the big hurdle that we have right now. So yes, individual Latin mass parishes, overflowing of people, but how many Latin mass parishes are there? There's not enough. Uh, the big reason why 98% of practicing Catholics are not attending a Latin mass is because there's not one nearby or they have to drive three hours to get to one. So the thing I'm most excited to announce that, that we're currently producing is a diocesan priest training curriculum. It's a video series with uh, downloadable resources, animations to train diocesan priests to celebrate a Latin mass. Um, also resources where they can order everything they need to celebrate a Latin mass delivered to their door, Latin mass in a box. <laughs> um, there's other resources we're producing um, like a server training, you know, that can keep the attention of a seven-year-old. <laughs> um, imagine like an audio library of all the Latin prayers and chants for choirs and the priest. So like, okay, I'm doing third Sunday after Pentecost and I can look up, I can listen to the chants, you know, again, in an app, an easy way to find, not in an obscure website. These, these resources exist to some degree, but they're, firstly, they're not beautiful. And secondly, they're not easy to use. If it was a click of a button, if it was all in the same place, this would be so much easier to use. So resources like this um, is what we're producing. So all this together, think about, think about this. So the trilogy is let's introduce millions of people to the Latin mass. The future of mass of the ages and what we're building right now is a platform. And the goal of that platform is to move the needle to increase Latin masses worldwide with content and easy to use resources. And to pull this off, that's why we've added three full-time staff. And you're going to meet them in the next coming weeks. Uh, maybe you've received an email from Christian, our development director. But yeah, we've added three full-time staff and I mean, we're gonna introduce them in future um, live streams. And again, episode three, we're hard at work on it. Uh, we leave on a production in a week, <laughs> going to California um, again. And I, I can't go into details, but we're, we're hard at work on episode three and the wait is going to be worthwhile. We've added full-time staff to allow us to do uh, this big new thing, you know, creating what we're calling the front porch of the Latin mass movement. So we're designing a website right now. This is just, you know, the design as it currently stands. We don't yet have a design for the library of content, but you can get an idea for like, just we're, we're going to create the, the first next step for anyone interested in the Latin mass. So maybe they're a priest who's like, well, maybe I'll, I'll want to learn this Latin mass thing. Maybe they're a curious Catholic who wants to know what the big deal is but a website that can act as the next step, the front porch. We're not here to replace every other ministry, but we're here to provide resources and content that's actually going to move the needle. Trainings um, and uh, you know, downloadable things like that, a, a storefront where you can get everything you need to celebrate a Latin mass, a choir training I didn't mention yet. So yeah, a lot of exciting stuff. So. I know, because I've talked to many of you, I know what some of you are thinking right now is that what if Pope Francis does X, Y, or Z? Is this just a fool's errand? How can you say you want to increase Latin masses worldwide when Pope Francis has ex expressly said that he wants them to evaporate? So... Let me ask you a question. Do you think the Latin mass will be taken away completely? Let me read a, a section from the book of Acts, chapter five. But one in the council rising up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, doctor of the law, respected by all the people, 
commanded the men to be put forth a little while. And he said to them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. He's talking about restricting the apostles and their preaching. For before these days rose up Theotis, affirming himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves. And he was slain, and all that believed him were scattered and brought to nothing. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee, in the days of the enrolling, and drew away the people after him, he also perished. And all, even as many as consented to him, were dispersed. And now, therefore, I say to you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to nothing. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest perhaps you be found even to fight against God. Do you believe the traditional Catholic movement is of God? I do, <laughs> then have no fear. Here's another verse from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, I prayed to the Lord saying, alas, 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 O Lord God, behold, thou hast made heaven and earth by thy great power and thy outstretched arm. No word shall be hard to thee. Thou showest mercy unto thousands and returnest the iniquity of thy fathers, of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. O most mighty, great, and powerful, the Lord of hosts is thy name, great in counsel, incomprehensible in thought, whose eyes are open upon all the ways of the children of Adam, to render unto everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his devices, who has set wonders and signs in the land of Egypt, even until this day, and in Israel and amongst men, and has made thee a name as at this day, and has brought forth thy people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and with wonders, and with a strong hand, and a stretched out arm, and with great terror, and has given them this land without which thou didst swear to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. And they came in and possessed it, but they obeyed not thy voice and they walked not in thy law. And they did not any of those things that thou didst command them to do. And all these evils are come upon them. Behold, works are built up against the city to take it. And the city is given into the hands of the Chaldeans who fight against it by the sword and the famine and the pestilence. And what thou hast spoken is all come to pass, to pass as thou thyself seest. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Shall anything be too hard for me? Don't lose hope. The TLM, the, the Roman rite, is the love letter written by the Holy Spirit to the Father. He will not let it die. If you believe that, then I'm asking you to join us. Um, we are, in the next few weeks, going to trickle out more information about our, our new website, what we're building, the new platform how we're going to increase Latin masses worldwide. So if you go to latinmass.com slash give, then become a founding donor. We haven't announced the giving tiers yet, but we also wanna honor you with perks. So if you give at a monthly amount, so just give at whatever amount you feel called to, but if you give at a monthly amount, you will likely unlock some perks as well. So, you know, we're building something that will stand the test of time. Um, we're not here to react to everything going on in the church. We're not a news site. Um, you know, news sites are good, uh, like, you know, 1 Peter 5. You know, you might, you might read LifeSite News. We're building 
uh, a library. So it's the difference between like, whoops, where did that go? Hold on. It's the difference between if you walk into like a newspaper publisher, they'll have like all these machines running, all these people walking around, like how do we write the next story? Like what's on the front page? They're, they're necessary and good, but they're reacting. They're reacting to problems uh, to create information that's gonna be forgotten in a week. That's not our mission. Our mission is to create content resources that stands the test of time and is something that is gonna bless the future of our children. Um, it's something that's going to move the needle. That's going to create a different perception about the Latin mass um, for our children and for bishops. So let me let me just share this thing. It went away. The Holy Spirit does not want me to share it. <laughs> Here it is. Okay. And if you have comments, um, I'll, I'll try to get to a few. I don't want this uh, stream to go on too long. Um, so just imagine like a, this isn't a very good, no, you can barely see it. Sorry about that. You can imagine just going to a website, having a Latin mass finder, you know, in, in mobile form, it's really easy to use. Click of a button, you get a Latin mass. Click of a button, you can send a Latin mass box to a priest so he can learn the Latin mass. If you're a priest, you go on the site and there's a training for you, you know, 21 plus videos with downloadable resources, animations, eventually a server training, choir training. It's a library of content that is going to increase Latin masses worldwide. And episode three is just the beginning of that. So we are a nonprofit. So Mass of the Ages Society, <laughs> if you join us, you're joining the Mass of the Ages Society and you are giving to a nonprofit. So you'll get a receipt, you know, it's tax deductible. And there's many good ministries you should continue to support, like the Fraternity of St. Peter, Institute of Christ the King. Um, but there's so many more ineffective ministries besides them. There's so many ministries we've been giving money to, you know, the church collections have just been so ineffective for the future of the church. I would say invest in the future of the Latin mass. <laughs> if you think we can bring that beauty and that that excellence from our films into short films and, and apps and uh, downloadable resources, trainings, then uh, I think I think we're well worth, um, you know, your your hard hard earned dollars. So go to latinmass.com slash give, uh, become a founding donor, give monthly and uh, you'll see if you unlock some perks uh, from doing that, depending on how much you give. Okay, lastly, uh, tomorrow we're uh, relaunching episode two. So join us. Now we are, just, just to clarify, we're still uh, fighting to get ep the original episode two back on YouTube because that one, that's the one that has 1.4 million views. Uh, and so it's, you know, for a lot of people watching, it's like, uh, should I watch this video? Oh, it only has uh, 10,000 views, maybe not worthwhile. Oh, it has 1.4 million views. Okay, there's there's something to this. So we're not in it for the vanity. So that's why we're launching, we're reposting episode two. The view count's gonna start at zero. And we're okay with that because we just want as many people to see this as possible. Uh, we made some edits you won't even realize, just some really quick edits. Like it doesn't have the intro where I ask for money in the beginning. But besides that, it's the same film. But please invite someone. I saw someone in the comments saying they're inviting uh, their family to watch it. So great, invite at least one person tomorrow. Join us live, someone you've wanted to uh, share this film with. Let, let's watch it live and, and talk about it. Okay, so I, I can answer some questions. Let me see, uh, let me go through the questions and see or uh, Margo, you're in the in the chat. If uh, you can let me know if, if there's no questions really to answer, or if, if there is a question, why don't you pop it up on screen? Tobias, yes. Is there a plan to offer the website in different languages? Yeah. So 
when you build a website in um, one language, uh, it can be auto translated into different languages so long as the the words on that website aren't designed if they're just a font. So firstly, the website will be mostly the important stuff will be able to be translated into different languages. In terms of the um, content, yes, absolutely. I mean, the first thing we want to do once we have the priest training done is to translate it into a dozen languages, the dozen most popular languages uh, where we want the Latin mass to spread. Uh, there's no resources, like zero resources for a Spanish speaking priest who wants to learn the Latin mass. So definitely going to offer uh, different languages. Thanks for the question, Tobias. Appreciate that. A question, uh, thank you for a comment, JHJ, I'm British. A question about traditional schools and academies. Can Pope Francis suppress them? Otherwise, these educational establishments will be nurturing the future. Um, I don't know. I don't know what what he can do with these. I'm not sure. I do know that as a lay ministry, we're not the fraternity of the Institute, so we don't... <laughs> We don't have this extra layer of obedience to, you know, the Pope in, in terms of we're not a society underneath Vatican or something. We're just a lay movement. So we have a lot of freedom to do what we want in, in a sense. You can't really shut us down. So that, that's a benefit to being a lay movement, Mass of the Ages. Even here in the U.S., many priests can't be trained due to distance or time. Our priests are run off their feet and can't travel um, due to distance. So um, if if by that you mean like trained like at a seminary, yeah, I mean, there's not many traditional seminaries or they don't have time. So, yeah, uh, diocesan priests are really busy. There are Latin mass trainings right now that are online. Um I think the Latin Mass trainings that are currently out there are good for a priest who knows the Latin Mass and wants to brush up on some things. But man, there's a lot of inside baseball that traditional Catholics tend to use. There's a lot of there's like a cerebral way to talk about the liturgy, but priests just need a simple step by step, you know, uh, explanation of do this, do that. And they need it broken down. They need it bite size. So our training is going to be really accessible for the busy diocesan priests out there. Thanks, uh, Edward, for your question. Is Mass of the Ages also promoting the other traditional religious order rites? Um, so Mass, yeah, that's that's a great question. Mass of the Ages. So our, I think the. You know, uh, the future of the Western right or the Western, you know, traditional world is the Latin Mass, is the 1962 Missal. The other rights of the church are good, you know, equally valid in terms of uh, the Holy Spirit guiding them, um, them being traditional. Uh, the 1962 Missal, um, as far as I understand it, is the most likely to be promoted you know, from the top down, like bishops promoting it, spreading it, that kind of thing. So the 62 Missal, I mean, with what Samorum Pontificum did, um, that's probably the future. I mean, think of it this way, like right now, the Latin mass is suppressed, is restricted, I should say. Um, but what we're building is going to last beyond these restrictions, beyond the current Pope, um, is going to be something that stands the test of time. So we're not making something that's going to solve every problem right now in the church, but it's going to uh, move the needle. It's going to increase Latin masses, not just tomorrow, but 10, 100 years from now. So, I, I, Edward, I know my answer to your question wasn't probably exactly what you were looking for. I probably need uh, more schooling <laughs> and more context for your question to be able to better answer it. But thanks for your question. About other short films, I would encourage one of the development and growth of one's interior life. Oh my goodness, there's, yeah, there's so much, we've been talking about this as a team, just, there's so much that, you know, DeSales or Aquinas, Dom Guéranger, others <laughs> have written about the Latin Mass, like they've unpacked the richness. 
of not just the prayers of the mass, like the, the fixed prayers, but like the liturgical year, there's so much richness that just needs a facelift that just needs a beautiful, you know, audio series or a podcast series or, um, short film series. Like one idea is let's, instead of saying, Hey, priest, celebrate Latin mass. Cause it's the right thing to do. We want to say, look how this is going to bless your prayer life, your spiritual life, your interior life. Um, look at how rich the Latin mass is. And so a series like that will definitely happen in the future for sure. Elliot, do you guys have any more debates upcoming? Thanks, man. Thanks for your question, Elliot. Um, yes, but not anytime soon. So our primary goal right now is the priest training, these resources, the new website, that kind of thing. And episode three, episode three is like number one. And we're always working on it, always pushing it forward. The debates is something we want to focus on in the future because we think there's a lot of, there's like the obvious things about the Latin mass about like, uh, the new mass is not what Vatican II said, <laughs> like obvious things you can point to. But then there's a lot of gray area. There's a lot of questions that people have, like, what about, can the Pope do this? There's a lot of gray area. So with those questions in the future, we want to have a show where we can have a, a roundtable discussion on those questions. Yeah, maybe maybe a debate, something like that, but that, that would be in the future. The first step is the platform, the resources, the trainings, episode three. Cameron Dawson. Um, Cameron, did you know your name means crooked nose? Sorry to break it to you, but that's what our name means. Um, but yeah, representing the Camerons, always good to hear another tratty Cameron out there. Cam Trad. Love the idea of the turnkey kits and resources. Excited to see episode three, too. Will you be making an informational type of kit that we can hand over to a bishop instead of directing them to the trilogy? Um... That's a good idea. Honestly, you haven't thought of that. It's not something in the pipeline. Right now we're we're in a, you know, very focused phase of these trainings, the platform and episode 3, but we also have this this ongoing list of these big ideas where we're like, "Oh, this would be great. What about this?" Um and a way that bishops can see like the information on the Latin mass, you know, really simply laid out. One one uh, idea we had was just a way I know sometimes people think letters aren't very effective to send to bishops, but a way that you can easily send a letter to a bishop through our platform, just click sign it and send it's sent off for you. So things like that. But that's a great idea, Cameron. Um, yeah, thanks for your question. John Doe. Um, unfortunately, most of the parishes don't have an altar for TLM and not equipped for a sung or high mass. Yeah, John, we have we have to think of this in, in phases. So what do you do when a priest doesn't have a high altar or they don't have enough servers for a pontifical high mass? Um, they don't have berettas. You can wait, <laughs> have someone else figure it out. You can wait until the church is rebuilt or something, or you can start, why not start at low mass? You know, the, the, our first training is going to be a low mass training because a priest can do that basically himself. And then the first part of the server training is training is going to be low mass. And then to transition to high mass, that will come next. So I would much rather, even though parishes, you know, are not an ideal, some of them are not an ideal uh, uh, setting. I've seen priests, you know, even though they have a table altar, will still celebrate ad orientum, can still do Latin mass. It's not ideal, but hey, I would much rather have a thousand more, you know, low masses all over the world than um, wait until the setting is exactly what it should be. Thank you, Michael, for your question. Does any of this um, ever reach popes, cardinals, priests in the Vatican? Has any of this been presented to anyone in the Vatican? Have they seen these episodes? I'm not sure about anyone in the Vatican. I mean, I don't know if people saw this, but in terms of just reaching people high up, um, 
people all of, all over the world. Cardinal Zen of Hong, Hong Kong shared episode two randomly on his Twitter account. I'm sure, well, I'm, I'm pretty confident that these films have ripples into the Vatican that people around the Pope are talking about it. I mean, if you search like Latin mass, anything, our content comes up. And so if these people are keeping their pulse on the Latin mass in any degree, they're going to see this, this content. But the thing, like one, one example from a bishop to talk about making an impact is a bishop was at our screening. And after the screening, I said, hey, first impressions, good or bad, what do you think of episode two? And he said, I had no idea. I had no idea. This isn't a failure of him. Um, bishops are busy. <laughs> it's a failure of the seminary system and uh, history and education. So yes, I, we're making ripples, but I think this platform is just so much bigger so much longer reaching than even our trilogy. Our trilogy introduces people to Latin mass. Our platform will provide content resources to increase Latin masses. Thank you, Xander. In the priest slash server training video series, will there be a focus on the French or German tradition with the server folding the vellum after the offertorium or the Sanctus candle, for example? I don't know. I've never heard of that. But what I can tell you is we have priests and advisors who have are speaking into the training series. So um, in order to make sure that our training series is by the rubrics of the 1962 missile, you know, there are some I've been learning that there's some question marks around certain rubrics and there's some interpretation even in the 62 missile and that we'll have advisors speak into that. But for any of these extra things, these are a resource that can be downloaded for you know ways to augment uh, the mass that don't do violence to the rubrics um, or like a separate video. If it's a big idea, then it can be a separate video. So for example, the priest training is a low mass training. And then the final video in that training series is before your first mass with a congregation. So you've learned to say the, the Latin mass and you've learned it, you know, privately. Maybe you've said a, a private mass. Then watch this before you mass with a congregation. Then after doing that for a while, then he has the, you know, the high mass master class, <laughs> you know, how to say the high mass and, and everything goes into that. But then you have supplemental ideas like this. So it's I didn't even hear about this, but it, it's one idea among many that we could in, uh, include. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for all your questions. Um, if you have more questions, detailed questions, uh, add them to the comments. I'll find some time to interact with them. So thank you all for joining. Um, I'm so excited about this. Yeah, just don't lose hope. Um, this it's the, the evil one wants us to lose hope in the future of the church, including the future of the Latin mass wants to divide us and, uh, have us just spend our energies in, in wasteful ways, complaining, you know, backbiting, gossiping, slandering, and ultimately not doing anything about it. So if you believe in the future of the Latin mass, you believe in what we're doing, then please uh, go to latinmass.com slash give. Um, so last question from Tom, not sure if you answered this question in the past, what has been the easiest and most difficult aspects of producing these episodes? Holy cow, Tom, <laughs> at the very end, coming with a really big question. Um, well, the, I would say if you're talking about the trilogy, I would say that the easiest thing is just, you know, you want to make something you believe in. And so the easiest thing is getting out of bed in the morning and wanting to, to work on it, wanting to see how, you know, the footage from Africa or Italy, uh, is faring and what it looks like. And, you know, um, so it's really easy to, to work on this because I believe in it so much. Uh, the team around me is really passionate, so that's really easy. Most difficult is just the, probably just the spiritual cloud above this whole thing. Um, 
I, I've never made something that I've felt so much spiritual resistance to make. We have a lot of people praying for us, but I mean, just the attacks that have happened on the Latin mass, um, on people who've been in our films, um, you know, the just ways, you know, internally as a team, we we've been noticing just like, you know, we got to stay close to the sacraments. We got to focus on what's fundamental, um, focus on our, our core identity. So yeah, the, the most difficult thing is just the like spiritual attack that's over this, but Hey, <laughs> this is not Cameron O'Hearn making, making a bunch of stuff. This is mass the ages, uh, a team of people. This is something God has been doing, you know, ever since we started this in 2020. And, um, I'm sure he will bring it to completion. I'm confident of that. So thanks for your time. Uh, I'm terrible at ending these things, so I'll just say bye, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.